Okay. Ryan. Okay. We're going to start this up exactly the way we got it, except we tighten up this linkage here. I noticed you commented on all the other carburetors you had. You did, you Some way you managed to beat that linkage loose. And you did the same thing with this one. Well, now we recompressed it. But now it's going to involve drilling out that shaft and threading it and putting a screw in the end of that shaft with a washer. But anyway, we re, we re swedged it. They call it swedging towards tight. Now we're going to go over these issues one at a time. First of all, you should never open up the inlet to see what was in there. So that's immaterial, irrelevant. Cross that one off. The linkage is wobbly. We've corrected that. And then paint is on the base, flies and all that. That's immoral, immaterial, irrelevant. That that little bit of overspray will go right off, and then it go right in because gasoline has that same property. Okay, you're almost positive the float has, has a hole in it. You're also you're positive all the time. In the first place, this don't have a copper float. It has the fiber float, so it can't get a hole. The second thing is, be honest with me, the email, if that's the case, then I was faulty, and if it was not brass reason, blah, 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 blah. Now, we're going to start it up just the way you sent it in. And we're going to show you all your errors, which I told you in the beginning, you have no business trying to be a mechanic and install a carburetor. Okay, go up there and show them what that, that center gauge is. We have three gauges that we're looking at on this side. We have some other ones over here. That gauge right there tells how much air to fuel. It's A slash R on the, on the computer. You see that red light in there? When that red light goes out, that means that computer is now. What that's telling me is it's getting barely running, which I imagine will do the same thing with you. And it's getting way, way, way too much gas. The proper gas mixture here was anywhere from 12 to 14, which that's the atmospheric pressure on the Earth. Now, if I turn these things in back where we had them, which should be approximately one turn out, or maybe even a little bit less, you watch the motor will smooth it right out. That one there is out. Now I'm watching over here. It should be between 11 and 12 is where I wanted that. And as you can see, the motor has smoothed right out. Just, just as smooth as a kitten. As far as the fuel leak, they always leak right here with the flare if you don't tighten them up tight. There it is. The carburetor is now going to give it up, rev it up. Run about 12 to 13, which is absolutely ideal. You can't get no better. Now I'm going to show you one more problem that you got. Show them the fuel pressure gauge down there. You got a fuel pressure gauge. No, 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 back here. And I and the directions you were told to get a regulator and set the pressure to three pounds or less. Okay? That's exactly where it's at. It's rather perfect. You were running it with somewhere up with six. And you can be switching, I want you to watch. Another system, we got two systems. As soon as you hook that system to it, you put the nine pounds pressure on it, you watch the mixture over here, and start getting richer and richer and richer, then it's going to flood over. Because you have too much fuel pressure, and you refuse to listen, you refuse to listen to me about, about setting the fuel pressure. Okay? Put it back at three, and you watch the mixture will go back like it. If I would have left it there, the gas would have come boiling out the top. Okay, put it back on three pounds. Over here. I did. Okay. Now, I'll give it a high RPM test now. Okay, now we're going to come around here and put it in here. We're going to hook the, the uh, dyno to it. We're going to see what it will put out as far as torque and horsepower. Let's see here. This was a disappointment to say the least. The proper procedure would have been 
after you stopped complaining and whining and sent it back and, and we could have corrected all that if we had to give you a whole other carburetor. But being that we know, at least I know, about you and your capability, I will not sell you another one. I will not sell you another one for double the price because all you're going to do is complain and have the same problem. But, okay, anyway, we got the dyno hook to it. I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to think you're from the old school where the carburetor's got to be set at one and a half turns and all that stuff. Because all you kept talking about was, I'm going to adjust it. Now you see, the, you see what happened to the fuel pressure? And it gives the impression that you got a bad flow. This is probably good. Those other carburetors that you sent back were probably perfect. But you, with your non-mechanical ability, <coughs> were trying to adjust them probably at one or one and a half, two turns, whatever. Now you see it coming smooth, see it come right out smooth. See that? When you put them where they're supposed to be, with alcohol, I can bring them right up there and stall them out if I want to. You can't beat it. That thing runs perfect, man. But we're going to go ahead and before we resell it, all we got to do is take that there and put a little bit of propane torch on that and then just bend that back up like that. We'll probably just put a whole new top on it. Normally in a case like this, with a carburetor that runs that good, we would deduct 20% restocking fee and no uh, shipping. shipping fee. However, this one here, we're just going to give it. I can't give you no more than what you paid. And I'm not going to pay no shipping, no nothing. Because of, because of what destruction you did to the unit, improper installation, improper tuning, you're a perfectly good running carburetor. Okay, go back to 